In the old days, if a bass fisherman caught a big string of fish, boy, you'd play heck figuring out how he did it. He probably wouldn't share any of his information with you. If you ask him what he caught him on, he'd probably lead you astray. And today's bass fishermen, especially the really good ones, are completely different from that. They are normally very classy guys, very well-spoken, full of information, honest guys. Most of them are trying to make a career out of their talent, so they're darn sure not going to lead you astray. Last Sunday night, our FLW Tour winner was Steve Daniels. Boy, he is a classy guy, full of good information. He's our guest this evening. I'm Jerry McKinnis. Welcome to Bass Profiles. I'm Steve Daniels. I live in Clewiston, Florida on Lake Okeechobee. I've been fishing professionally for 18 years. I have a fishing clinic and fishing school and guide service on Lake Okeechobee. I started out fishing farm ponds when I was a kid. When I was in grammar school and junior high school, all I thought about was fishing. I always enjoyed being outside and uh, doing things in the outdoors, and fishing was something I just really enjoyed doing. The first year on the BASS circuit in the 84-85 season in the Classic was on the, in Pine Bluff on the Arkansas River. All right. I nearly won it. I was only one caught a limit all three days and I finished fourth in the tournament. There's no real way of saying what's my strengths or what aren't my strengths. I, th I think it's uh, a day-to-day -day deal sometimes with me. Good tips go early and stay late. Here and everyone at home, one last good tip from the winner. Go early and stay late. Go early and stay late. Go early and stay late. <laughs> Bass Profiles is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. And by Shimano, tomorrow's tackle today. Good fisherman. Why? Why are you any special, any more special than the next guy? I think uh, maybe the reason I might do a little better on certain days than the average fisherman is just time on the water, seeing a lot of things happen, and uh, trial and error in a lot of cases. How long you been doing this now? I've been doing it uh, professionally for 18 years. Boy, that says a lot right there. Man, oh man. And, and you have been doing it so long that you're almost becoming uh, somewhat of a coach to a lot of guys, right? Yeah, I, I do a lot of that, and that's one thing. I started out with a guide service on Lake Okeechobee, and I've gradually worked into a little more instructional type of fishing, although we still guide people for trophy bass. But I really enjoy the teaching. A lot of the, the club fishermen all across the country are looking for ways of improving their success and uh, they're looking to some of the pros for a little more advice. So now I'm not just coming to you to have you uh, help me catch a big fish from from Florida. I'm coming to you and talking to you about becoming a better club fisherman. Maybe I want a career out of this myself. This little clump of stuff right here has landed right on a big clump of hydrilla, and it must be real open underneath. I caught five out here the first day. Didn't catch any big ones, but they're all nice keepers. The 8-8 eight eight came right out here in the hydrilla, just right on the edge. Flipping so heavy stuff, you use a one-ounce sinker, 30-pound line. The key to it is feeding that sinker down. That finger falls so fast, you have to ease it down in there. Once it breaks through, then you have to hold a little tension on it. Let it fall real slow. You've been fishing on the BASS circuit for quite a few years, haven't you? Since uh, 1984. And so this is going to give you that experience we keep talking about. Yeah, it's just uh, the more you do it, the more things you learn. And uh, we learn every day. I learn every day. Fishing changes. There are no absolutes. And if you think you're, uh, you've learned it all, then... Uh, you're not that good a fisherman because it changes constantly. 
How'd you find those fish that you basically won the t tournament on uh, uh, the last week's FLW tournament? Well, the fish that were in the open water I found before the cold front hit. And uh, I was basically fishing some flats, and I happened to see a school of fish chasing shiners. And uh, so I knew the, the little area that they were in, and I marked it on my GPS. And it was, a, it was an area that I was going to fish during the tournament. But uh, what happened to cold front hit? The water temperature was dropping really fast. It dropped like 15 degrees in a couple of days. And when that happens, there's very few active fish out there. So basically the same thing happened to us in the first FLW tournament. You know, I had to change my technique a little bit. When I found these fish in here, I could see them. They were chasing bait. That's the only reason I found them. I mean, look around. This looks, I mean, everywhere you go out here looks the same. And they're in this one little spot right there where my buoy is at. So these guys out in this little area that you've... Uh stumbled across you, you didn't stumble across that did you well basically i did <laughs> but i happened to see them so you know uh, that's one thing a, a good bass fisherman always does absolutely. He, i'm glad you're saying this he, he's aware mm -hmm. of things and you watch for any kind of movement and uh if you're fishing reeds you look for maybe a reed moving or something but uh look for bait fish right you, you know People talk about pH and things like that, but the whole key to bass fishing is, is being around a lot of bass if uh -huh. you're going to do good. But uh, there's not going to be a, a lot of bass around a place that doesn't have a lot of bait. Right. So you have to be around a lot of bass. So if you fish. saw a little spot where some minnows were flicking around in, it was not stumbling on the fish. These guys are kind of, kind of uh, uh, particular in this little area. And yeah. so you're, you're, talking, you're telling us a little bit about how you're, how you're catching them, what bait you're using. But you're making some changes with the, with the baits. For what reason? Well, all three of these baits are really, these are tools. These three baits right here are actually tools. And the bait that I used in the little hole, the small hole, mm -hmm. is this spangle lure here. It's a topwater lure. It has a prop. And the reason I used this and not one of these lures is it was a very small area. I had very little water to work with, very little open water. And this bait I could throw and work the edge of that little grass line and there's a little hole, and I could fish it really slow, and on top of the water it was real clear. You could tell by the way that they were hitting the bait that they weren't really feeding, they were just trying to move it. Got a lot of swirls, and I could, I could twitch it again, they'd come back, and every now and then one would bite it. But, you know, you could throw a worm in there and never get a bite. I tried it. And uh, so I know this bait, well, this is a confidence bait of mine. It's my favorite topwater mm -hmm. lure, so I throw it a lot. But in a lot of cases, they would bite a lot of different topwater lures in there. Okay, but you've got two more here, and, and you've got a little bit of adjusting you do with these two. Right. Now, this is a wooden bait, the bang lure. It's a true top water lure. You mm -hmm. fish it right on the top and right. twitch it. And, uh, and this is, is a long A bomber. This is uh, one of my favorite jerk baits. It puts off a lot of flash, and I figure it triggers a lot of strikes. And I fish this in more of the open water, and I'll fish it relatively fast in most cases. Sometimes I will slow it down some, but on a uh, when I did move into the more open water, it was uh, we were under kind of a, a real high pressure cold front, which the water was warming up, but still the fish were feeling the effects of the cold front and the high pressure, so they still weren't active, although they were starting to migrate back into the open spawning areas again. I could fish this bait real fast through these areas and trigger some strikes for some fish that, that were inactive, mm -hmm. but I could catch them on this particular lure. I've got a house full of cats, and and one thing when I try to describe what a, a you know bass to to a lot of my customers, I try to explain them to them more than being a fish, they're predators. And predators are very easy to catch. You know they're they're very ferocious and aggressive, but sometimes they're inactive. But there are certain things you.